Welcome back to Streaming Tech. I am the one Christo, and it is a lot more difficult to come up with a pun for every one of these episodes than I initially thought. So welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be talking audio. So in our last clip, which you can see here, or probably here, um, I went over the comparison between a Blue Yeti and a Blue Snowball Ice. The Blue Yeti came out as the winner quality wise. And so that is what we're gonna be working on setting up today. Cameras are important. Your overlay is important. The look of your stream is important. But if the audio isn't there, if the audience can't hear you clearly, there's a really strong chance your viewer is not gonna stick around. So we're gonna fix that today in Streamlabs OBS by adding a new microphone, a new Yeti, and programming it through and through. So here we have um, Streamlabs OBS. So you can see the screen. I've put my face in front of the section so you don't get that crazy uh, depth repeating effect. I'm going to go ahead and show you the first place we're going to go to add new audio. You're going to hit this little cog at the bottom left and pop that open. I had to go ahead and relocate my face, but the easiest way to add a new audio setup, a new microphone, is to go to the audio section. Surprise, surprise. So uh, mic or auxiliary device number one, I'm using my Yeti stereo microphone, just hitting the drop down there. You should get the option to use whatever it is you have uh, plugged into your PC. The Yeti's a USB mic, so it's plug and play. It's really, really simple to set up. Now, the only other thing you may want to change is the sample rate. There's quite a bit of literature as to if it makes a difference between 44.1 and 48 kilohertz. Honestly, it's so minimal, you probably won't notice the difference. There is a little bit of literature that says 48 is better. I'm going to make that change. And I will link as well in the description below. Uh, one of the websites that I read that I liked the most regarding the sample rate. So you can take a look there and see what, uh, what you think and if you think it's worth changing. Now that I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch off my Yeti. And we're going to go with the new Yeti I just added, which has no filter set up to it at all. So here I am. Um, it might sound different. It might sound the same to you, to be completely honest. This is basically the microphone out of the box. So we have no filter set up. We have nothing. This is just what you're hearing. You're also going to notice while I'm not speaking, you're still going to get a little spike of sound. So we're going to want to jump in there and clean that up. Once we hop into filters, now you're going to have obviously a few options. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a noise suppression filter. We're going to call it that. What this basically does is it's going to try and clear out the sound in the background. As I mentioned, if you, uh, you saw me before when I wasn't speaking, there was still a little bit of that green line. See that? It's now gone. Minus 30 might be a little bit aggressive and it's going to depend on your setup. So what you want to do is keep in mind, you know, I have an air conditioner going in the background that you probably can't hear. My PC is on the floor, so it's not right next to me. So you won't pick up the fan noise. I mean, I, I play mainly card games, so you're, my fan's not turning on while I stream really. But you can, I would say, start at zero and slowly work your way back. So at zero, I'm still seeing some of those green spikes. They're not huge, they're not big. I, there's not a lot of noise in my room. So I'm gonna go ahead and start slowly bringing this down. Maybe we try minus five. Tiny little spikes, but honestly, I think that is fine. We're gonna go ahead and correct that later on. So next thing we're going to add is the noise gate. So essentially what a noise gate does, it gives you the open and close threshold. Once sound crosses the open threshold, that minus 26, that's when you're going to start hearing noise, hearing voices, etc. When it drops below minus 32, that's when it's going to cut off basically the microphone altogether. So if we go ahead and we continue to look in our microphone settings, you can see here that with just the default settings that kind of popped up when I opened this, there is no green spikes whatsoever anymore. And that's because the sound is too low to get picked up on the open threshold. The open threshold is again, when that microphone is going to turn on. If I whisper like this, it's a little bit quiet, but the important part about it is that the microphone still turns on and picks up the sound. So if I'm going to be speaking 
And you can test this by speaking at the lowest volume you expect to speak on stream. I don't really plan on whispering. I'm not doing any ASMR stuff. So if I speak fairly quietly, it still shows up. No problem. So that's good. We can even theoretically turn this up a little bit. But if you notice now, when I speak a little bit more quietly, watch the green bars disappear. They somewhat disappear randomly while I'm speaking. So you can see that I'm not necessarily getting all the volume, every word, some of them at the end of my sentences are probably being dropped off. And I'll listen back to the audio to check that. But I think that that's something you want to be cognizant of. If you have it too high, you're gonna end up catching a few of those words and they're gonna get lost because in between your microphone's not gonna pick. So we're gonna drop this down. Let's give, let's give minus 30 a try. So if I speak quietly now, see how every word is picked up. The green bars are staying pretty much the whole time. You should be good to go. So I like that at minus 30. Um, you know, most people I would say are probably a little bit closer to minus 25. Just the way I speak, my voice, minus 30 feels a little bit better for me. Uh, you just, you want to make sure you're not going too low because then everything will get picked up. Close thresholds, you want this to probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 10 decibels below your open threshold. So if I leave this here, it seems fine. It looks good. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking um, when I'm looking at the sound at the bottom of my, uh, of my monitor here. So I think we're gonna stick here. Now it does seem a little bit quiet and that's what we're gonna do in the next step. On a side note, you've got attack, hold and release timers here. These are in milliseconds and basically they measure the attack time is how quickly that microphone is going to open to pick up the sound. So you want to have it be um, fairly quick. Hold time is going to be basically how much time that microphone is going to stay open for. Once you hit the close threshold, how quickly it's going to uh, or how long it's going to stay open. And that release is how quickly it's going to close once you hit that close threshold. So I typically leave them a default. They've served me fine so far. I like them there. We're just going to go with that. So the third piece is the compressor. So we're going to grab a compressor filter. We're going to add this in. Now what a compressor is going to do, a compressor is going to bring up some of those lower sounds and it's going to bring down some of the higher ones. You don't want to blow out your, uh, your viewers eardrums. So you don't want to be hitting that red too often. And when you do, you want your filter to help you bring it down. In a perfect world, where you're looking to hit is kind of that middle yellow range. If you hear me speaking right now, you can see that I'm, I'm a little bit low on that range. So I probably do want the compressor to help push me up a little bit. And I do, uh, I probably won't have too much trouble on the high end. So that shouldn't be too much of a concern. Your first option here is ratio. Now the ratio is going to talk about how much the thresh, once you hit that threshold, how much is it going to be compressed? The industry standards usually around four or five. That's kind of mid range tends a little bit high. So you're getting a lot of compression. You don't personally, I don't like the idea of having too much compression because what that's going to do is going to limit the variations in your voice. You're going to sound a little bit more monotone. You won't get as many highs or as many lows going to kind of push them together. So I'll stick it around five. That's usually where I'm at. Now threshold, the best way to measure threshold is to speak really loudly into your microphone and make sure that that threshold does not allow you to get way into the red. So uh, brace yourselves guys, I'm gonna pick up the volume a little bit and uh, play with the threshold. So maybe turn my volume down a little bit while I'm playing with this. So if I speak really loudly, actually this is kind of nice at minus 18 because as you can see, my um, the higher I go, the lower it's bringing my volume. Whereas if I go the other way around, I'm just going straight into the red if I speak loudly. That's actually the opposite of what I'm trying to do here. So the compression is really, you want it to land you somewhere mid yellow. So if I speak really loudly and I'm in the red, I probably don't want too much of that. What I do want is to be able to be kind of like this around minus 15 or so. See where I'm, I'm almost in the middle of that yellow range. Like that's pretty much where I want to be. Now, again, if I'm speaking a little bit more normally now, you're going to see me kind of fall maybe a little bit short. So we're going to want to play with that a tiny bit. Now, the attack and the release, same principle. Attack, how quickly does that happen? How quickly does it trigger release? How quickly does it lay off? So I typically leave those basically at the, um, the default level as well. 
But where I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit extra volume is at the gain here. So this is the gain after compression. You can go ahead and add a filter to boost your volume before the compression. On the Yeti, you actually have that option on a knob on the back of the microphone. So that's another way to go ahead and do it. Um, I typically find that the Yeti's volume is pretty nice altogether. So I'll add a little bit of extra volume after my um, after my compressor has taken effect. So if you see for the most part here, I'm actually a little bit high. So I'm still touching the red. So that might be a little bit that the compressor can come down. The gain looks good. And I think I'm hitting um, probably mid-range yellow. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with where this is at right now. No, you know what? We're a little high. So let me just turn this back down. Let's look at grabbing this around a three. Let's look at bringing this back down to maybe uh, 18 or so. So again, now we seem to be capping at the high levels of yellow, which is fine. We don't want to go past those into the red, um, but most of the regular conversations we're having kind of hang out in that red range. So uh, yellow range, sorry, that's pretty good. Now, the last thing you're going to see here as well is sidechain slash ducking source. Now, what you want to look at here is Theoretically, if you had, um, if you have your game and you have it playing through your PC, you're going to have basically your different, I have it listed as headphones. So you're gonna have your different options of audio. And if you set it up to have, let's say your, your headphones or your, in this case, your just audio from your PC, What'll happen is while you're talking, it's gonna lower the volume of your game or whatever background you have. And the other way around, when you stop, it'll pick back up. It can be a useful feature. Again, based on the games I play, I'm playing mainly card games. The volume doesn't vary much. My voice is pretty consistent the whole time. So you're not gonna see as much need for that. Some other people do like using it. It's just not something I've ever done. So that's it for this episode of Streaming Tech. Thank you all for checking it out. If you like this, please hit the thumbs up below and throw into the comments what you think. Did the filters work for you? Did you like them? Did you tweak them or change them? How did it work for your stream? Please keep me posted. Let me know. Check me out as always, twitch.tv slash the one Christo, and you can listen to my stream. Let me know what you think of my audio, my music, my gameplay in the background. And at the same time, hit the subscribe button here to check out my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh, what a lovely tea party.